Hey guys, so uh, quick video that I didn't really expect to make, but Fuji had an event in New York City called Fujikina, and uh, it was a couple days ago, Saturday. And um, I live in Brooklyn, so I basically just quick subway ride. Lisa and I went there and uh, we went to check it out. So um, you had to RSVP to the event, and basically I knew there were speakers and there was gonna be um, touch and try sessions, which is a really bad phrase. But um, yeah, so my contact also, who I communicate with at Fuji was, the, was gonna be there. So I was pretty excited to go. I didn't really know fully what to expect. I didn't know if there was gonna be some additional things there that um, would be really cool to check out. But yeah, so the event was at the Glass House. It was on 12th Ave and 48th Street. So pretty close to my office anyway. So we just basically took the C train there and um, my partner Lisa came, she recorded, uh, she, the, well, the plan was she was gonna do some B-roll and whatnot on my X-H1, my, my trusty uh, X-H1 here with my 23, the slowest focusing lens in the world with the slowest focusing camera in the world, not that I've said that before. But anyway, um, yeah, so she's wielding that. I was wielding the GFX, which I'm recording this video on, which I have to say, um, I didn't load it into the computer yet, but the quality looks insane compared to the X-H1. Let me know uh, what you think of these intro, uh, the intro quality here. Um, but yeah, this is like, uh, I think 10 bit something, uh, 442, I'm not sure. I don't do, I don't speak video, but anyway, um, I had the, the GFX 100S with the 50 millimeter pancake, um, pretty small lens. Also, we're testing the autofocus here. I'm not wearing my glasses because um, it did not like my glasses, but I have a right eye uh, autofocus on and um, it seemed to be doing pretty well, the tests that uh, I did pre, uh, prior to recording this. But um, but yeah, this was, uh, I'm borrowing this lens, this 50, 45 millimeter uh, 2.8, which is on the GFX 100S recording this video. And then um, I'm also borrowing, borrowing the 110. I borrowed that before. Uh, first time I borrowed, I borrowed the 110. Yeah, I'm testing out that, uh, that pancake because uh, I wanna see how the quality of it, it is a really small lens. Um, and it is just, the GFX 100S with that pancake is just amazing to carry around um, and shoot photo or video or whatever. Um, and not need to carry like a whole big backpack with multiple lenses and stuff. You're just a quick thing. So Fuji basically said that um, the first 40 people to go in their time slot, you had to pick a time slot you're going to show up at, would get a bag of swag or something along those lines. Um, I showed up about 15 minutes early. There was no mention of anything and I was kind of in a rush to get in. So uh, I don't know what happened, but um, I did get a whole bunch of stuff or a few things on the way out. I'll show you a close-up uh, towards the end of the video. But uh, yeah, with that being said, let's get into the video. Um, I wanted to get this video. The pacing of this is going to be really fast. I intended for this to be a quick video, but it'll probably be over 30 minutes because I don't know how to be concise. But um, yeah, so let's get into the video and I'll ramble more on the end. Oh, but before we get into the video, um, if you could do me a favor, and please subscribe to this channel. If you wanna see more of my content, hit that like button. Um, I'm trying to grow this channel. I'm trying to make more videos and the bigger I get, the easier it will be for me to make more videos and whatnot. So do that and now we're getting into the video. So this event had a check and clean for up to four pieces of equipment per person. I actually just sent my eight to 16 millimeter in to get cleaned slash recalibrated. It was slightly soft. And uh, today, I just figured I would bring my X-H1 and 23 millimeter to keep the bag light. No need to get my GFX checked slash cleaned because I just got that. Basically, after checking in the X-H1, we switched fully over to the GFX with the 50 millimeter pancake for all of the video recording for today. So after filling out a quick form, we dropped off the gear and headed to the speaker presentations. We caught all of Tom Hegan's presentation and he is an aerial photographer who primarily uses the GFX. All of his photos were amazing, really crazy detail and nicely edited. He also had a segment of images shot with the X-H2, but you could definitely tell which were GFX 100S shots and X-H2 shots. The quality is definitely different. 
Next to the speakers, there was an area where Fuji had all their latest lenses displayed in cases along with some photography next to it. This was pretty cool seeing all the latest lenses. This part was seeing the 20 to 35 millimeter. I'm definitely looking forward to trying that lens out. Next, we checked out the gallery from various artists of printed pieces. And this was pretty interesting. Most of the artists are using either the X-H2 or the GFX100S. Of course, this was Fuji kind of showing off the ability to print the X-H2 pretty large. A lot of these prints were upwards of four by six feet, maybe five by three feet. And it was pretty interesting to see this. Personally, after looking at, after looking up close at a lot of these photos, I would say the X-H2 doesn't really hold up to be printed that large. Maybe it's the print quality, so I'm not gonna hardcore talk about it, but a lot of the prints looked really nice. They had this metallic print on a lot of them. Really cool stuff. So we walked around a bit more, checking everything out, and then I went to pick up my camera. While picking up my camera, my Fujifilm contact uh, told me there was a downstairs level to check out. So I got my camera all clean, and went to go check out the downstairs. So this was definitely where the magic of the event happened. I walk into the first room and there is a table with all of the X series lenses on one side and the GF lenses on another side. Since I was on the X series side, the first thing I did was pick up the 200 millimeter F2. What a massive lens. And uh, apparently these were cool to just pop on your camera and go outside in the balcony and shoot. So that's exactly what I did. This segment, I'm gonna jump into some pixel peeping in Lightroom. And uh, this was a pretty pleasant surprise. We had to battle a few lantern flies on the balcony, but uh, aside from that, let's jump into Lightroom. So these are the files that I took with the 200 millimeter F2. Um, I'm just gonna keep this really, these sections really short, just give you a little taste of the lenses. This is not like a long-term review or anything, it's just, literally walked onto the balcony and took some shots. So here's Lisa holding up my GFX 100S with the 50, uh, the 50 millimeter on it. Let's get the, let's just zoom in here. We're at 100%. And um, yeah, I mean, this is pretty, pretty impressive considering it is a 23 megapixel file. Again, I'm on the X-H1 and um, like the, 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 this lens really renders the bokeh insanely beautiful. Um, I think this really, I, I, it would be really interesting to do a comparison between the 250 and this lens, but this is, this is incredible. Um, this lens has a $6,000 MSRP, so it's not something I would ever probably buy, but really, really incredible results. Um, similar, similar characteristics to the, um, the 250 on the GFX, like the subject's not as sharp, but you know, you have pretty decent separation between like the arm here, the hand, the camera, and this hand really, really sharp. Um, a bit of a fall off on the, you know, on Lisa, on, the, on her shoulders and whatnot, but then the background is just completely blown away. Um, in looking at, also these aren't edited, they're, I mean they are just, just really slightly. Um, I'm not gonna pixel peep these, but I mean this, this background is just, it, it's the most incredible background I've ever seen. Like the separation, the bokeh rendering is just completely dreamy. Um, if we drop this down, you could see some bokeh balls here and whatnot. Um, I probably would bring those out if this was an image I was gonna use, but um, but yeah, I would really love to see this lens on the X-H2. 40 megapixels with this lens would be a pretty neat combo. But yeah, this would be an incredible portrait lens. Um, in looking at some building shots, we zoom in, we're at 66, let's just go to 100. Pretty sharp, you definitely, um, you know, when you, when you shoot buildings like this, you're definitely gonna have some atmosphere distortion and whatnot, so I'm not really, gonna pixel peep like crazy hard on this. Like, you know, obviously this background in the back is, you could see the distortion and whatnot. Um, pretty sharp edge to edge on this building. I mean, literally edge to edge sharpness, um, aside from that top, which was 
atmospheric distortion. This is pretty crazy. Um, let's take a look at this shot. Pretty sharp. This building, hyper sharp. All these bricks, really sharp. I mean, this is absolutely incredible. This, this lens is, it's such a niche lens. I don't know how many people actually own this lens, but uh, incredible results. Bit of distortion here, but still, still pretty sharp. Uh, this one I didn't even edit at all. Every brick is sharp. Bit of a creeper lens, but this is for science, so it doesn't count. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I mean, this lens, absolutely just, just immaculate. Can't really go in too much further. Like at 200%, you know, we're definitely at the, the limit of the ASPC sensor. But uh, you could tell like the way, the way this feels to me is that this lens wants to push further. It wants to be, it needs, it, it really just wants those additional megapixels, but doesn't have it, not on the X-H1. So I know on this channel, I've only made videos on the GFX so far. And other than that, I've complained a bunch about the X-H1 and its autofocus. I could have definitely tried out a few more lenses on the X-Series, but I really just had my eye on that 200 millimeter and this 150 to 600 that just came out. So as you can see, this lens is really, really big. Um, there is no lens hood on this. It is just simply the, the lens alone. Um, and also in this video, you'll see I put on the uh, teleconverter, the 2X teleconverter as well, which I do own. Um, not that I'd recommend it, but anyway, yeah, this lens, uh, pretty, pretty insane. I don't know if I would, um, if I would actually borrow this lens to, to test out. This isn't the best segment um, review on this lens. I really, I think there's a decent learning curve to this lens. Um, 600, it's a 600 millimeter on the high end, which is a 900 millimeter equivalent. And I really have only had experience shooting the 100 to 400 on the G, on the X series, which is a um, 800 millimeter equivalent, uh, a 600 millimeter equivalent. So I'm not used to this focal length. As you can see here, I, I recorded a couple videos and when I put this lens on the camera, it was just really shaky, um, like Ibis was turned off. Really kind of confused me. Um, I know I, I didn't turn Ibis off, so I'm not sure what was going on. I wanna say something happened where maybe Ibis was turned off on this lens and that turned Ibis off on my camera and then when I turned it on, it didn't turn Ibis on, uh, in body stabilization on, I'm not sure, but I didn't work this out, but this lens is definitely a bit unwieldy. There's also a dirty spot, as you'll see here. A bit fast here, but I am trying to get this video out as soon as possible. I basically, I'm headed on a trip um, this Friday, which I'm gonna have some videos on. It's gonna be really neat, but uh, this one I'm kind of squeezing in. So moving along, um, these are some images shot with the 150 to 600. Um, and the thing is here, Again, I, Lightroom doesn't show you if you have IBIS on or off. So I'm kind of at a loss here. Um, if we zoom in, you'll see that it's not in focus. Um, I think you have definitely, I'm battling like atmospheric distortion here. We're at 900 millimeters uh, equivalent. And you know, that 200 was only at 200, F4, F2 was only at like, uh, I think a 300 millimeter equivalent. So, you know, um, it's kind of hard to judge here. Also, shooting at one five hundredth of a second was kind of not the best thing. All of this was in a super rush. Um, I really just kind of threw these X series lenses on to just kind of, um, you know, try them out quick. Uh, I wasn't really, I was definitely, I should have uh, slowed down a little bit, but you know, it was in the moment. So as you can see here, I have adjusted the the, uh, the settings and uh, I lowered the shutter speed. Not sure what I was thinking here. Um, but again, you know, this, this is not, not sharp. Um, it's not really, it's a little soft, not really in focus. I'm not sure what was going on. Um, I'm gonna just chalk this up to user error here. Uh, I'll take the, uh, I'll take the blame on this one. But um, I think ultimately 
good piece of advice if you are interested in this lens. Um, 600 millimeters, then, which again is 900 equivalent, is not really something that is very easy to wield without a tripod. Um, yeah, you know, I tried a couple of different things here, um, but I also think if I if I just shot if I just crank the ISO a smidge and uh, you know shot at like maybe one one thousandth of a second, um, something like that, you know, be a bit better. But um, yeah, I think I think I'm just hit with a little bit of uh, not a fast enough shutter speed and also a bit of atmospheric distortion because again, all these buildings, all these close ups are just further out again. And um, it was a hot day, so. You know, I think I think that's what the issue was here, but um, I guess you know to just not to just walk away with some you know positive positivity. Um, this is pretty. This is pretty wild. I, I've never shot with a lens um, this long before. Um, it, it would be pretty interesting to use this for three for a couple weeks and and see what it's like. But I want to be honest. I don't really know. I don't know what I would shoot. Like just shooting people's windows in New York City is it's just not really, I don't really have a purpose for this lens. That's just, that's just wrong. Um, yeah, this, this, as you could see, I think shooting at a thousandth of a second, um, you know, this is obviously sharp. I think the only reason that, I don't know, I wanna say this is atmospheric distortion. I, I'm not really a hundred percent sure. Um, I shot this flag that was kind of nearby, but um, you know, I, I just, I'm not sure. Maybe this is in focus here, um, but this is a bit, but you know, the flag was moving. I'm not sure. I would say, um, I would say uh, this is a very specific lens. Um, let's take a look at some teleconverter images. I actually own the 2X teleconverter for the X series. I've put it on my, my 5140. I'm not really in love with it. I, I'm not really, uh, I'll, I'll give the, the most non-technical definition I can of it. I think that ultimately in the teleconverter is like real life zooming in in Photoshop. It's like, it, it just blows up. It just pushes your lens a bit further, but you do lose image quality. Um, so yeah, I thought it would be a smart idea to do one two two fiftieth of a second, um, which is a 1200 millimeter equivalent. If we open up the calculator, um, 1200 times 1.5. Yeah, so that's 1800 millimeter lens. Um, it's pretty, pretty insane. Um, I, I shot towards New Jersey, the New Jersey side, trying to find some things, nothing. I mean, I didn't, you know, it is 250th of a second. I'm a crazy person. Um, I bumped it up to a thousand. I think this is, this may be sharp. Um, it's just a bit, bit, uh, a bit blurry. But um, we were also, we're at F16 because uh, I believe I, I cranked the F up a little bit, but um, you know, with the 2X teleconverter, you're at double the F stop. So you just lose a lot of light. I think if I shot it at 1 2,000th, uh, it probably would have been fine, but you know, the, the ISO would have had to been crazy up. So as you can see here, I, I was just trying to nail something um, in focus. And I, Failed. So let's see, maybe I got one. Hey, I got one. All right, I'll take it. This one's definitely in focus. Um, this is kind of like a fail segment here, but uh, yeah, if you were just, an, if you're just, if you like the 5140 and you're like, oh, I'm gonna grab that 150 to 600, you may, you may want to think twice about it. It's a little, it's a little crazy. Uh, probably like a bird wildlife photographer lens. I, I'm completely unsure. I'm gonna mark this as yellow because this is the uh, the first one that is in focus. Yep, that's soft. Let's keep on going. Yeah, there's this weird like sheet thing hanging up. Oh, I guess this is like pool or something. Um, yeah, this really isn't the lens for like New York City. You're just basically like, you know, it's just that uh, I'm not sure what you would shoot in New York City with this lens. Because you can go to Prospect Park or Central Park or something. Um, this might be in focus. I'd say this is in focus. Anyway, there's a quick preview of this lens. Um, let's move on to a more successful story. Okay, so I am saving the best lens for last, so bear with me on this one segment. But remember in that last video, that Mega 250 
uh, review video I did and I kept saying how I wanted to get the teleconverter. Well, before I grabbed the ultra wide, the new one that just came out, I wanted to try this out really quick. Um, so uh, I just couldn't resist, it was right there. So I basically grabbed the 250, put the teleconverter on, or, you know, it works the same way as the, uh, the 2X. Actually, it, it was only, it's only a 1.4X teleconverter. It actually only brings the lens to a 350 millimeter equivalent, so you get an extra 100, 100 uh, millimeters on that focal length. And um, yeah, I mean, it's a big lens, but it kind of felt small after using that 150 to uh, 600 millimeter lens. I was just, uh, you know, checking the settings here, making sure I didn't do anything weird like I, I almost kind of did on the uh, 150 to 600. And uh, yeah, let's, let's jump into uh, Lightroom, and see what we're looking at. But we need to keep this moving, keep it quick. Um, these are images with the 250 millimeter and the teleconverter, the 1.4, as you can see in the meta information. Um, these pictures tell a completely different story than the hyper zoom. Uh, I'm not sure what the super, super telephoto, um, mega super telephoto, I'm not sure what the uh, 150 to 600 would be. But um, yeah, if we, if we just zoom in here, um, we're at 50%, we'll just go to, uh, we'll just go to 100. Um, you know, it looks looks a smidge soft, um, but uh, I think we're doing a bit better than the the mega zoom. Um, I'll just keep moving along. So this shot was blurry with the uh, the six hundred, um, but as you can see here, it is really not. Um, maybe the bricks are slightly blurry. So I guess we're just with that with that mega zoom. We're really just hit with atmospheric distortion. Uh, maybe that's the main culprit. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but um, I, I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with with this result. Um, you could tell the lens is holding it together. It's just a bit of atmospheric distortion that's really um, causing it to be a smidge soft. Uh, let's just zoom in here. Again, we're at 100%. As you can see, the this is pretty uh, pretty um, distorted, heat distorted. Um, Gotta love the GFX, you have such great details in the shadows and whatnot. Um, but yeah, a little soft. Um, I mean, this isn't really a crop I would, you know, take anyway, but uh, not bad. If we zoom out a little bit, um, obviously it's a little bit softer at 67%. I, I'm not sure what the math is, but again, teleconverters, they just kind of punch you in physically with glass instead of digitally zooming. Um, I think it's a little bit better, but you know, I'm not really the biggest fan of teleconverters, but these images tell a way, uh, a way different story than with that, that other mega zoom. Again, it's a little soft. It's, I mean, there's only so many things to shoot, right? I'm at the same balcony. So I got a lot of the same shots. I could do a, a comparison, but I don't think that's worth it. Uh, we're just going to keep chugging along with these images and see, uh, see what we've got. Again, you know, a little, little like the, these lines for the building are a bit blurry. Um, you know, you could see here, like they're a little wavy, like these, these structures look a little wavy. So definitely getting some atmosphere distortion here. Um, but overall, I mean, I'm not disappointed with this teleconverter so far. Um, moving forward, this was that American flag that I shot. It was pretty close. Um, you know, this isn't bad. This flag's in focus. Can't complain. Um, again, note the, the F I shot wide open. So uh, it's not a F4, it's a F5.6. Um, but again, pretty happy with this uh, teleconverter. I don't know, this I might be sold on this teleconverter. If I do buy the lens, maybe I would consider buying the teleconverter. Um, I was pretty happy with this shot. I think it's a pretty cool composition. Maybe, uh, maybe I could make this work. Not sure. Um, even with the teleconverter, you know, you got your object in the foreground being pretty soft and then the main focus was here. So, I mean, this is pretty sharp. We zoom into a hundred, not bad considering, you know, maybe these things produce heat or, you know, whatever. Just gonna keep moving. So classic case here, this is across the river. We're definitely getting some 
heat distortion and atmospheric distortion and whatnot. So no comments here. This truck's pretty sharp, kind of sharp, even though I this was the main focus. Um, so here, what was that shutter? Yeah, the shutter has been at 1250. Um, again, this is pretty, I'm, not, I'm pretty happy with these results. It's just, you know, atmospheric distortion. So I can just, I'm gonna say it like 10 more times until the segment's over. So here, I'm not sure what I hit for the focus point, but this car is not, it's pretty good. Um, these cars are pretty sharp. I didn't show this example, but I tried to shoot this with the uh, 150 to 600, it failed miserably. So um, overall, you know, I think this, this uh, 350 millimeter lens, you know, you kind of get similar results with that mega zoom, considering you could crop in really heavy on the GFX. You got, you know, almost five times the megapixels for something. I don't know, I'm not sure on the math on that. Just zooming in on this boat, not bad. Boat's rocky, so kind of cool. Let's check out this building. I don't know, the bricks are a little soft. I'm not sure what the, I would guess this would be the point of focus, not bad. I would assume shooting from the rooftop, which I don't do too often. Um, you know, maybe it's hit or miss. It depends on the day, how much pollution's in the air, how hot it is. But you know, at face, if we're not, we're clearly at all the videos I make were pixel peeping and doing ridiculous things. But you know, at thirty three percent, it's not bad. Pretty quality image. You could, it looks sharp. Zoom in on this uh, triangle building. Really sharp, happy, definitely happy with this. Um, this looks good, we're at 50%. Just go to 100 and so that I can you know, regret my decision of saying it looks great. I mean, not bad for, for dealing with atmospheric di uh, uh, distortion, pretty good. Let's keep going. Definitely got some structure there. Not bad. Yeah, you could definitely see. It's pretty crazy how you could see um, these lines in the building are all wavy. Heat and atmosphere. I'm not gonna say the phrase again. Let's keep going. It's BMW. Couldn't lock focus on this. This is, as you can see, it's a bit distorted due to the atmosphere. And uh, yeah, this was, uh, if you recall, Something I tried to shoot with the that other mega zoom, the X series. Sometimes you know, sometimes auto auto does it. Sometimes it just just doesn't. Um, but yeah, you can see that this is some pretty heavy distortion here. Um, this is a little soft, but yeah. And then we got one more image. I'm not sure where this was, but I mean, this is super sharp. Be happy with this. This is great. I'd say, I'd say, um, I'm going to try to get this lens again with the teleconverter for you guys. I'll do a, I'll do a mega video part two with the teleconverter. Um, see, see what you guys think, but yeah, this, this lens with the teleconverter tells a different story than the, uh, 50 to 150 to 600 if we're comparing. So I said I would make a quick video for you guys, but uh, I guess quick is about 30 minutes these days because uh, I'm not good at being concise. So to be honest, this was the moment I was waiting for. I wanted to try those X-Series lenses because why not? But in reality, the lens I was the most excited to try was this new zoom, this 20 to 35. As you can see here, um, pretty compact, not too bad. I want to say it's felt the same size as the 23. I'm pretty familiar with that. I borrowed that lens for about three weeks and that lens stayed on my camera the whole time. So, but I will say this is a very light lens. I was completely shocked at how light it was. Um, this would be a really fun lens to bring around. Super light, still feels premium. Um, still made of metal in the same build you would expect. It's just a bit lighter. Go a little bit more in depth because I have been 
waiting for this lens ever since it was rumored. This was the lens that kind of solidified me jumping into the GFX system. So I am just super excited to try out this lens. So like I mentioned, um, really initial thoughts of the lens, the build, I'm really excited because it's very light. Um, so I'm hoping that the image quality pans out. Also, as you can see here, I've adjusted this image. Um, I've adjusted scale and I did auto, uh, auto transform because I don't think that while like Adobe Lightroom recognizes this lens, I'm not sure since it's not even released yet it, that uh, the proper adjustments are being applied. So I don't know, maybe I'm incorrect, I'm not sure. But that being said, let's take a look at this image. Um, so this is shot at f4 wide open, also at 20 millimeters, so the widest it goes. Um, let's take a look. So we are at 100% right here and everything is tack sharp. Um, if we go into 200, I mean, this really is pushing it. It's not really usable, um, but again, everything is really sharp. Um, yeah, it's pretty impressive. Um, even all the way to the corners, let's just zoom back out, go back in. Um, yeah, you got a bit of distortion on the corners. Again, let's just, you know, I'm not sure what Adobe's doing here. Um, I, I don't think, uh, I'm not, I think after like a couple weeks after lens is released, usually it, uh, there's a Lightroom update and it's like, we've added the, uh, an update for that lens. I don't know, but, um, pretty sharp overall, um, edge to edge pretty much. Um, this, this looks pretty good. Nothing too distorted here. I mean, nothing really actually looks distorted at all here. Well, I guess a little bit here, but, um, not bad. This is a 16 millimeter equivalent. So definitely pretty wide. I'm, pre I'm used to the, I have the ultra wide on the XF system, um, the eight to 16 and at eight millimeters, that's basically a 12 millimeter equivalent. So I am used to a bit wider than this, but um, I kind of rarely shoot at eight millimeters anyway. So Fuji, it looks like they did pretty good with the distortion on this lens. Um, I also took the same shot, um, same point of view, just uh, punched in at 35 millimeter. So. Actually, I'm not sure, 35 times, this is about 27 millimeters. So um, if we zoom in here, let's just go to 100. Um, again, really, really sharp. If we zoom in at 200, same thing, kind of not really, kind of falls apart here. Um, but you know, wides aren't known for being super, super sharp. Um, really the same thing, um, super sharp. If I just adjust this highlights here, or maybe, yeah, we have all the detail on the brick, so that's cool. Um, let me just bring this back. Again, edge to edge. Um, you know, this is hyper sharp all the way through. Less distortion when it's at 35 to be expected. Um, let's take a look at this side. You know, very minimal distortion on this side at 35, which is a 27 like we talked about. Um, you know, pretty sharp. Definitely, definitely a little bit sharper, definitely less distortion. Um, not bad overall. Um, we do, we can do a quick comparison on these. Um, punch in at 100. Uh, let's just find a similar point. No, pretty, pretty sharp throughout. Like both, both lenses are both, both ranges. You definitely are getting a really, really sharp image. I'm, I'm absolutely impressed impressed with this. Let's keep moving. Um, I think I did the same thing again, but at F8, let's just take a quick look. Yeah, it definitely looks a little bit sharper. Let's see the background. Um, okay, finally got it loaded. Um, I'm not going to adjust this. Let's just imagine uh, how it looks, but yeah, pretty sharp. Um, I think this image at f8 um it may just be darker what i'm seeing but it may look a little bit sharper um let's just keep looking yeah it looks like this building is definitely a little bit sharper here it looks a little little softer maybe it's contrast again i'm not 100 percent sure i should have did the contrast before i jumped into it 
Um, yeah, I wanted to see how the New Jersey side looks. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think I think it looks a little bit sharper here. So definitely pretty cool at f8. Um, a little bit sharper, more de uh, slightly more detail. Um, but anyway, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna compare everything. Um, but yeah, let's just wait for this to load. And uh, this is f8 wide open at 20 millimeters. Pretty good. If I jump into, uh, just bump the contrast a little bit. Yeah, this looks, I think this looks pretty good. Definitely really happy with this results. I can't wait to get this lens and do some, uh, some long exposures. Um, yeah, I don't know if, I don't know if I'm going to go through every image. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this as a wide. Let's keep going. Just zoomed in on, this is at 35. Yeah, I, I really feel like with a wide, I, I, I don't mind primes on the GFX system, but I just feel like I like the ability to zoom a bit more on a wide. I could do away with any other zoom, but on a wide, I just, I tend to like the zooms a bit, a bit more. Okay, this is a, this is at 35 millimeter, one five hundredth of a second. Um, let's take a look at F8. Zoom in a little bit, 200%. Yeah, this, this we, there was a bit of uh, atmospheric distortion on this, so, or maybe, maybe I slightly missed focus. I'm not sure, but we're at 200%, so let's just zoom out. Yeah, I mean, it's, this is great. This is absolutely really nice um, instead of me doing my usual craziness with my panos i could just get this ultra wide lens and uh, do one long exposure shot really cool this is the same shot just wide open at f uh, not wide open but at f8 but on the widest zoom again this is this is impressive um Everything edge to edge, super sharp. Uh, I don't see anything wonky going on here. Overall, really great. Okay, I think I did. I think I did some more tests here, but let's just let's just look at some uh, additional views. Just got a street view. Well, you got to crank your head a little bit to the left, but uh, overall, looks good. Very sharp. Um. Yeah, this was a shot straight up at the building. Um, so I think here, pretty sharp. I think the, I remember the edges being a little soft here. Um, we are wide open and I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure. I think because that this is actually a lot closer than the, the far away buildings we shot, we are gonna get some softness in the edge, but I think that's more of a depth of field thing. But this is at 35. Let's look at, this is at 20. Again, we're at wide open at four. Um, this is actually a little bit sharper. At, I mean, that's this is edge to edge. Edge to edge sharp, um, hyper sharp, which is interesting. Um, I'm not sure, maybe it's a little softer on the bottom. Maybe, um, maybe what's going on is there's a bit more depth of field when you're at 35 and at 20, you just have less, so, but. This is edge to edge sharp. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty impressive. Let's take a look at a few more. Yeah, you definitely got some, some bokeh, some, some depth of field happening here, which looks great at, even at 20, um, here is one of those lantern bugs. They were a nuisance for sure. They kept flying into me, crawling on me, uh, while I was out here. But since, uh, I love you guys so much, I had to, uh, fight them off to make this video. Let's see, this is at 35. Yep, we still got that. Yeah, this bokeh looks kind of weird with the, with the lines. Um, it's definitely weird. It's, all, it, it's sometimes always odd to see bokeh on a really wide lens. It always looks a little bit, you know, it's not super desirable, but the center point was here. And that's of course sharp, so that's good. Um, yeah.
Okay, so that's about it. Um, here's my first impressions of this lens. Again, there's no correction going on here, but um, I think, well, like I said, I believe Lightroom will probably come out with some settings to push, but uh, but yeah, let's get back into the, uh, the video. As you can tell from that candle burn there, it's almost October and it's almost spooky season. So I figured I would dress the scene a little bit. Um, but yeah, so that was my experience at Fujikina in New York City. Um, actually, I didn't really think I would have enough content to make a video on this. Obviously, I brought the content, the gear to do it, but um, didn't really think there would be a, a enough content for me to really do something. But the real magic happened when I went downstairs and I would just try out a whole bunch of lenses. So yeah, so this is kind of like half what went on at the event, half like ultra quick reviews on a few lenses that Fuji has uh, released and uh, upcoming. So I also tried out that um, 45 to 100 on the GFX, but I skipped that um, trying to make this concise, even though it's super long as it is. So on the way out, we stopped by the entrance table and uh, they didn't have any more bags left. I saw people walking around with like tote bags, but um, they did have some pins and some stickers. So took some of those. Um, also, when they gave me my camera back, it came in a little Fuji kind of like lighter tier tote, which was kind of cool. Anything with Fuji film on it, I'm sure it'll come in handy when I like move or something. But um, yeah, overall, really solid event. Um, it's really awesome to meet my contact at Fujifilm. I'm not gonna say his name, although if you watch my older videos, you'll probably find out who he is. But uh, yeah, really cool dude. I um, appreciate everything that he does for me and Fujifilm does and, um, you know, lending me all this gear and whatnot. But um, yeah, overall the event was pretty cool. I would love to go to another Fujifilm event. Um, I enjoyed looking at all the artwork and whatnot and also checking out the lenses. That was pretty surreal. Um, I was so focused on all the lenses there that I completely forgot about what bodies were uh, also on that table. Um, I'm not sure if there was an X-H2. Everyone keeps asking me. I, I posted a story on Instagram and people were like, oh, did they have the X-H2? And I was like, oh, I don't even remember. I was so like, I, my first reaction was to like, just grab that 200 millimeter F2, which was like, I wish it was the size of my arm. I mean, wish my arm was the size of the lens. Like the thing was like this big. Um, it was pretty surreal. Anyway, I am rambling on. I hope you enjoyed. Um, seeing what the Fujifilm event was like. Um, and of course, some of my reviews, I'm definitely gonna get my hands on the 20 to 35 millimeter lens um, as soon as I can and get a review out with that. But probably before that, I will have a review on the 23 millimeter F4 on the, the GF lens. And um, I already have that video laid out. I just need to write the script and whatnot. So yeah. So let me know um, what your thoughts are on any of the lenses or the event or anything. Um, I'd love to talk with you guys below in the comments. And also, if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely subscribe. I have tons of content coming out like I talked about. I also have an upcoming trip to Boston, Salem, and Rhode Island. It's like a mini road trip. I'm gonna have some videos on that. So uh, definitely stay tuned. Uh, hit that like button if you haven't, and I will catch you in the next video.